Okay, chapter seven, uh, sampling um, for making frequency claims. So let's start by defining uh, sample versus population. So a population refers to the entire set of people or things that you're interested in studying, making inferences about. The uh, a sample that's a, a smaller set of that population. Okay, and when we when we refer to population, uh, usually we're not referring to the entire population of all humans on Earth. Uh, typically, this is something more targeted. It could be something like Dixie State University students, or St. George residents, or uh, male rats of a particular breed. Okay, the the sample then is a subset of that, and most um, studies are done on samples. It's pretty rare that you'll conduct a census of the entire population of interest, in which all members of the population are measured. Okay. So, in order to generalize, um, you want to have your sample be as representative of that population as possible. So you want to sample through unbiased means. So if you're wanting to make an inference about Democrats in Texas by um, sampling some Democrats in Texas, a biased sampling technique would be recruiting people sitting on the front row at the Texas State Democratic Convention. Those are probably going to be pretty ardent. Democrats uh, may not be representative of that population of interest. And uh, if you were to instead obtain a list of all the registered Democrats in Texas and call a sample of them through randomized digit dialing, that would give you a less biased sample. Now, uh, people are uh, can volunteer to respond or not, and so uh, it's still not totally random. Uh, there are some issues with that, but it's at least it's at least better. Uh, than that bias sampling technique. Okay. Um, if you sample only those who are easy to contact, then that's a, a bias sample. That's called convenience sampling. It's a quite common technique. Uh, some examples are having people agree to participate in an online poll or fill out a, a review for a restaurant on, on Yelp or something. Uh, or exit polling, um, approaching people after exiting polls asking who they voted for. Uh, many studies in psychology are done on uh, students, university students, because it's convenient to just have a bunch of people um, there and ready uh, and uh, who are willing to participate for a little extra credit. Um, but these should not be considered um, necessarily representative of the population. Okay? Um, now, you can still conduct like a valid experiment that's internally valid, even if it doesn't have that external validity due to a random sample. So it's not it's like these are useless, but they are biased. Okay. Um, so self-selection, uh, sampling only those who volunteer. Um, so these are just a couple of examples of online polls, one in which people self-selected uh, to respond on, on BuzzFeed, this latter study, and then it is possible to still conduct an online study. Here's an example of one that's less biased, um, in which people are randomly selected online to participate in the poll. Okay. Um, so probability sampling is what you want to do to obtain a more representative sample. Okay. So if you have uh, like a random number table or a random number generator on a computer, which are pretty easy to come by, you can then um, select um, some whatever number of individuals from your population randomly. Okay? That's just called simple random sampling. Uh, systematic sampling um, is where it's just a slightly different method where perhaps you just um, sample every seventh person, pick some number, um, and then sample every seventh person. Cluster sampling, um, that's where uh, clusters are selected. Now, these could be things like households or schools or counties, something like that. And then when those clusters are then randomly selected, everyone is sampled, um, is selected within those clusters. So everybody in a house in that household that is selected, or everybody in that county, for example. Okay. Uh, Multi-stage sampling. Is similar, except instead of selecting everyone in a cluster, um, they're 
participants are randomly selected within those clusters. So randomly selecting three schools, and then at each of those schools, randomly selecting 10 students. Stratified rambling, random sampling is somewhat similar as well, except uh, the, uh, the strata is what they're called, are defined previously. They're not randomly selected. So you might say, here's uh, elderly participants, here's middle-aged, here's young adults, and here's adolescents. And we're going to randomly select uh, you know, 10 subjects with, within each of those strata. Uh, oversampling is sometime, sometimes done just if you have uh, small groups, rare groups, uh, then you may not be able to get uh, enough participants uh, to run good stats uh, just because the, the ends are too small. So you may kind of oversample, um, overrepresent uh, small percentage groups. And then you might adjust after with a, a procedure called weighting. Okay. Um, if it's if it's known um, that uh, related to that, if it's known that uh, uh, sample is unrepresentative in, in some way, uh, like maybe uh, you're conducting a, a, a landline poll and you know that you're going to miss out on a lot of younger individuals um, because fewer younger people have a landline, then you can kind of adjust for that by by weighting your sample in that direction. Um, so there are adjustments that can be made to, to help when um, there's a lack of random, uh, or lack of representation in the sample. Okay, um, this flowchart just kind of breaks this down. Um, Non-probability sampling, um, that's where some people just have a 0% chance of being selected, um, whereas with probability sampling, all members of the population of interest have an equal and known chance. Okay, um, and for external validity, it's, it's better to have probability sampling. Again, uh, with people anyway, you're almost never going to get a truly random sample because it's voluntary participation, but it's at least better um, than non-probability. Uh, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that random sampling is not the same as random assignment. Random assignment is used in the context of experiments. It's one component of experimental design that's necessary for internal validity, whereas random sampling helps to increase external validity to allow you to generalize results to the general population, to the population of interest. For frequency claims, external validity is quite important. Um, internal validity doesn't even apply, um, but for experiments, external validity is usually not a high priority, whereas internal validity is, is critical if you want to make a, a causal claim. Okay. Uh, we mentioned some of these already, convenience sampling, um, you just leave some people out, you just go with those who are um, easy to come by. Uh, purpose of sampling, uh, where you're not, you're not really trying to get uh, a random sample of a certain population, maybe you're targeting, really trying to target specific kinds of people, uh, like smokers. Um, snowball sampling, uh, this is especially useful if you have uh, some group that you're trying to study that's rare, uh, you might try to harness the power of referral, uh, word of mouth uh, referrals, uh, and have people contact their friends uh, to participate in your study. Uh, quota sampling, this sounds kind of like uh, stratified random sampling, except uh, you determine your subsets of a given population, your strata, uh, but then there's non-random sampling within there. It's convenient sampling or something like that, but just trying to get up to certain numbers uh, within different subgroups. Um, as I mentioned, uh, external validity is a priority, um, more so than for causal claims and association claims. But there are times when it uh, you can still make some important conclusions, draw some important conclusions from uh, survey studies. Um, and frequency claims can still be meaningful even without external validity. For example, uh, if you're studying certain characteristics that are very unlikely to differ between respondents and non-respondents, then it probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, and so one example is uh, like reporting traffic incidents on uh, Google Maps. 
Okay, there's a, there's a non-random sample. It's only those who self-select and choose to respond. Uh, but there's probably not much difference in ability to recognize uh, a car wreck and report it uh, between those who choose to respond and those who don't. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe like uh, conducting a survey in a certain city, uh, there may be certain insights that gained from just targeting a certain city that could still generalize uh, to uh, other similar cities uh, because they probably theoretically don't differ in some, in some characteristics. Okay. So it may seem a little counterintuitive, but uh, the sampling technique is actually even more important than getting a big N uh, for a study if you're making a frequency claim. So um, there's uh, kind of a sweet spot too, that N of a thousand, um, getting more people beyond that uh, usually doesn't get you a whole lot of additional precision. You can see how uh, in this graph, how these error bars shrink as you get more people. Uh, those indicate the margin of error. And you can see that it, it drops pretty drastically as you approach a thousand, but then after that, it really doesn't drop as much, kind of levels off. Um, so N of 1,000 um, for frequency claims uh, tends to be kind of a sweet spot that balances um, the amount of money and effort that you have to put into collecting your sample and uh, external validity. So that's the end.